Three years ago, I received a message on LinkedIn from an entrepreneur called Frederick Verstraten. He said I was an interesting contact, bonus points for getting my attention, and that he was doing something really innovative and was all over the news. There were three links in that message. They were about bio-based construction, soil pollution, and industrial hemp. You see, when I received that message, I was working at MasterCard and I was feeling desperate. Please don't get me wrong, I loved the company and I loved the people I was working with. But it was a few days before my birthday and I just received thank you for your 10 years of company service award. And if birthdays make us think one year back and one year forward, holding that award in my hands literally made me think in decades. And I loved my previous decade, but my heart was screaming at me that my next decade had to be different. I don't know if your heart talks to you like that, mine does all the time. That message came at the right moment, but little did I know that that message would introduce me to the world of construction, that it would literally change my life, and that it would bring me here on stage today, working together with Frederick, who is in this room too. Why are we talking about cities and buildings? and sustainability and construction. Because construction is one of the largest polluters. It's responsible for almost 40% of our greenhouse gas emissions because of the materials and the energy use. And for 30% of waste. That's 1.3 billion tons of construction waste a year. To help you visualize that, that's like the weight of all the buildings in New York twice. Every year, we are throwing away two New Yorks of buildings. It's like construction is turning into a fast fashion. We used to treasure buildings. Nobody is thinking of demolishing the Colosseum. Instead, we queue there on a sunny day with a tasty gelato in our hands, just so that we could marvel at history and wonder how it was. But now we build, and in 20 years, we take it away to give place to something new. But construction has a much better side to it, too. Very human and a wonderful one. Because why do we build in the first place? Because we want safe places to thrive. Safe places where we can work on something new together with our colleagues. Safe places where we can learn and meet other people like we do today. Or safe places where we can come home, cuddle on a couch, and get our faces plastered with stickers or that we could have a quiet moment and then turn around and discover that there's been an explosion of toys in the living room. These are my kids, by the way, during the pandemic. Or that we could travel new places and check out how bouncy the hotel beds are. I personally think that the beds are only as good as they're bouncy, otherwise what's the fun? So cities and buildings, they help shape our memories. And they might seem to be the most mundane ones at the moment, but they're also one of the most precious ones. So how do we bridge that gap and make construction better? What if I tell you there is an answer, an answer that makes better buildings and better cities, and the answer that is restorative for nature? And that answer is bio-based construction. Now, you might tell me, Elena, I have seen the Three Little Pigs fairy tale. Two brothers went bio-based. One built from straw, another one from wood, and their houses collapsed under the pressure of the big bad wolf. It's only the house of the third brother who built from brick could keep the big bad wolf out. And I want to keep the big bad wolf out of my house. And you're right, I fully agree. But the thing is, when we think about bio-based construction, we usually think of wooden houses like this. This is not a random house, this is actually my house. I grew up in the Arctic, and when I was three years old, my parents bought this small piece of land outside of the city to embark on a crazy risky journey of the Arctic agriculture. And my dad built this wooden house all by himself. We spent amazing summers over there, growing vegetables and fruits and, and berries. I remember eating them from the bushes by kilograms and swimming in the ice-cold river and playing with the neighborhood kids past midnight. 
but we can't scale these types of buildings everywhere. For many reasons, but one of those reasons being that we kind of need trees for something else, like the oxygen that we breathe, like creating rain for our crops and our showers, like biodiversity and regulating climate on Earth. And let's face it, in Europe we say that we don't do deforestation, but in reality, we've cut down everything that we could already. I'll give you an example. This is a picture of Iceland. It's one of the most surreal landscapes that I have seen, with no tree in sight. But did you know that 1,000 years ago, Iceland was full of trees until we cut them down? Now they are struggling to bring even 1% of those trees back. So yes, construction is going to be some combination of brick, and even for that, there are upcoming solutions. But it's also, especially with retrofitting, what we put inside those brick walls that can really make a huge difference. Today, I want to present you a product that will revolutionize construction for the upcoming years. It looks like this. We like to call it a giant Oreo cookie. Some say that uh, it looks like an ice cream sandwich. But what it is, it's a building sandwich panel. Now, a building sandwich panel is a modular element that you can use for different buildings. And one of the most common ones is made out of wood on the outside and fossil fuel-based insulation on the inside. Let's discover what this sandwich panel is made of. On the outside, you have reinforced hemp wood. It's made out of plant called industrial hemp. It looks like this. It grows extremely fast, up to four meters in just four months. And because of that, it helps us save 1,000 trees per hectare per year. It's also one of the strongest natural fibers, so it's stronger than wood. It's circular, so you can repurpose it at the end of life or chop it and make exactly the same panel as before. And because it grows so fast, in these four months, it captures up to four times more CO2 than a young forest in a year. So it also stores carbon. Now let's look on the inside. The inside of this sandwich panel is made out of mycelium or mushrooms. My story with mushrooms goes back to that summer house in the Arctic boreal forests, because my dad used to take me there to gather mushrooms and berries. This is a picture of me on a particularly successful day. My dad and my mom, we went to the forest. First, my dad took us through the swamps, literal swamps. So he showed us where to step so that we don't get sucked in and stuck. That's Arctic 101 for kids. You learn how to walk on ice and on swamps. And then we reached those remote islands, and they were full of mushrooms everywhere you looked. We picked them up, baskets of them came home, cleaned them, and my mom made the most delicious mushroom and potato pie. And you see, I thought that I knew a thing or two about mushrooms because I could distinguish the good ones and the bad ones. But turns out, I was just scratching the surface. What you see on this picture is mushroom fruit. But it's what happens below the ground that is particularly fascinating. If you have heard the trees communicate with each other, they do that through mycelium network, or through fungi. That's how they send signals, that's how they send nutrients. Fungi also take carbon and store it under the ground, and they make our nature circular. They are the end and the beginning of all new life. So this sandwich panel, the inside of it, is just hemp fibers with mycelium sprayed on it and it grows in seven days. Only seven days. Imagine, we used to extract fossil fuels from the ground, emit a lot of CO2, send them through complex manufacturing processes so that we could have insulation for our houses. Now we can just grow mycelium insulation in seven days locally. Also, fossil fuel-based insulation does the job of keep, keeping out the cold, so we can cut down our heating costs. But once the heat is in, it's really difficult to get it out. If you have one of those houses, maybe you noticed, I have one, and every summer I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to open all the windows just to get a little bit of fresh air. And by noon, it's hot again. Well, 
This insulation also keeps the cold out, but it also has a better heat capacity, so it lets the heat out too. Meaning that we have to spend less money cooling our buildings, which is particularly important with the heating climate. Put together, this sandwich panel moves us closer to a vision of construction and buildings turning from huge carbon emitters into huge carbon sinks. Now we can literally grow our cities and buildings. Now you might wonder, this is all fantastic, but if you're going to start growing our buildings, where are we going to do that? Where are we going to grow our food? And here is the fascinating part. With the help of plants like industrial hemp and mycelium, we can help bring soils back. I'll give you an example. Here you see the picture of French fries. Now, I live in Belgium. We do say that fries are from Belgium, so they should be called Belgian as they are the best in the world. I thought you should know. <laughs> but jokes aside, whatever type of potatoes you like, whether it's French fries with ketchup and mayonnaise, or it's puree, or it's stumped with vegetables for my Belgian countrymen, or it's potato chips, farmers can grow this delicious crop for us only once in four or five years. Because potatoes suck all the nutrients out of the soil, and in between they need to grow something else to bring the soils back. Well, scientists have calculated that if you use rotation crops like industrial hemp, you can help restore the soils and you can bring the yields of the main crops by 5 to 15 percent. Why is that important? Because globally, 52 percent of our agricultural soils are already degraded. In the EU, that number is even higher, 60 to 70 percent. That's 100 million hectares just here in the EU right now. And that number is going to be 90% by 2050 if we don't do anything. So why not use the strengths and the superpowers of plants and mycelium to help us? I'll take you a bit further than that. Our soils are not just degraded, they are polluted too. Here you can see the research on just one type of pollution in our fruits and berries. 20% of the EU grown fruit and berries contain forever chemicals in them. In strawberries, that number is 37%. This is what we literally put in our bodies. And we think that soils and us are far away, but 95% of our food comes from soils. So I have news for you, my friends. Soils and our guts have the same bacteria and nutrients. So if soils are depleted and are polluted, so are we. We can only be healthy if our soils are healthy. Now you see where I'm going with this? We can actually have holistic solutions that make construction better and cheaper, that also restore soils in the meantime and remove CO2 and create local jobs. It's a story of radical collaboration between construction, agriculture, industry, and cities. And we like to say that simple scales, but I disagree. Simple is what got us here in the first place. We need to think and learn from nature, do like nature does. Nature is circular. Nature is complex. And if we learn from nature and use nature as our ally, we can actually solve several problems at once. Last but not least, we like technology and engineering because we can measure exactly what it does. So we thought, why not give the same transparency to nature? That's why we partnered up with Microsoft, Delaware, and Vito Research Institute to build a platform that will trace everything from the field into the final product, where with the help of satellite imagery, we can check how the crops are growing we can trace how they were harvested, where they were transported, where they were produced, and then in which buildings they were placed, so that we can ensure circularity. And that would result in near real-time ESG reporting for our partners and ultra-transparent carbon credits, AAA. 
For decades, construction was on a one-way road towards environmental wreck. Companies know we need to change, but there was a conflict between the business economics and sustainability, leaving sustainability as a nice to have. Not anymore. Now we have a business model that creates a win-win for everybody and regenerates our nature. If you'd love to learn more about technology or products or touch the sandwich panel and other material with your hands, please come visit us at our booth. Thanks to Microsoft, we are here. Or reach us through this QR code. If these types of problems and solutions is something that you care about, let's talk today. Thank you.